two thirty. So we need to make sure that we end at least a couple of minutes early or a minute early or something and get out of the room so they can come in and set up. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, this is the note well. Um, you know, hopefully you have seen this many times here, but it is important to put it up in front of everything. Uh, you know, there are, there are a number of things that are touched on here, uh, not just what it means to make a public contribution and the fact that that can be used by the IETF and IETF process, but there's a code of conduct in here, um, you know, issues about the process, uh, expectations on people, and of course our privacy policy. And so please, uh, if you have not, you know, please make sure to take the time to review that material so that, uh, you know, we can all be uh, working together um, as a team here to make the internet a better place, right? Um, oh, I probably should have started off by saying also that I am James Galvin, one of the co-chairs. Antoine Rishurin is with us in the Meet Echo up there at the top. Uh, he is the other co-chair. Uh, we were doing the sound check with him just a minute ago so that we, we know that it all works. Um, and so with that, this is a, a document review request. I've always kind of put this up here. This is just something we've been, been doing here um, in this group. We're a relatively small group and a small group of people you know, self-selected, and we we have actually been been having some issues trying to keep up with uh, document shepherds and and uh, you know moving documents along, and so I just think you know in the IETF context in general, it's useful to keep in mind that you know the IETF is larger than just this working group. So in addition to please paying attention to documents in your working group and taking the time to comment and actually read them and support them or or not as the case may be, you know, please do reach out and take a look at documents and other working groups. Um, and equally feel free to ask others to come and look at your documents. We have had two meetings here at this IETF, um, session one, session two. This is our normal regular working group meeting. We had a work session yesterday for a couple hours and we'll get a brief summary of uh, uh, each of the uh, documents that was talked about at that session. So let's jump right in here to our agenda and formally start the meeting. As usual, we need our Jabber and Note Scribe. And look around, can I get any volunteers to, to do Jabber and, and uh, Notes for us, please? Somebody? Oh, it's not usually this hard, but. in the middle of the screen. Hit that. OK. Fair enough. I was trying to expand the slide to be uh, itself on the full screen, but you're right. OK, so that's better. That's fine. Um, really, I know that we usually uh, don't really want to reach out and tag somebody to get the regular people. But uh, we really do need a, a Jabber scribe and somebody just to take notes. You'll do the Jabber. That's right. You're sitting in the seat. I should have assigned it to you because you were sitting there. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, uh, somebody to uh, take some notes for us, please. I'll look in the. Yeah, it's a short meeting, guys. Uh, really could uh, use somebody just to, to take some notes. You know, um, just a quick summary of actions. Grab the agenda. And if we make any comments about anything. Really? Ah, okay, Rick, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Rick Wilhelm. Okay, we've already done the note well, so let's jump right into the uh, charter update. Uh, this slide actually shows on it the change in the charter that has been put on the mailing list. We've gone through working group last call and it has been submitted to our area director. The last two paragraphs under the old were replaced by the one sentence there that you see under new. Um, for those who haven't seen that before. There were a couple of issues that were talked about on the mailing list with respect to this. Um, you know, people in general were, were worried about uh, this group having too broad a scope um, and, you know, likely to take on more things than it really can do. And the response, you know, the explanation that I had given on the mailing list, and I'll just highlight here, is there is that key, you know, phrase there in the middle of the sentence at the bottom in consultation with its responsible area director. 
So the idea here is to try not to add too many words defining exactly what we may or may not do. Um, we do want to try to use the phrase, you know, related to the operation of internet identifier registries, whatever those might do. We're believing that that includes both RDAP and EPP, and it allows us to, to get into some of the operations and, and uh, standardizing certain activities that those uh, registries uh, would take on. Um, and of course, we would always have to make that with the responsible area director. So the escape clause, if you will, is the area director has to agree. So we always have an opportunity to make sure that we don't uh, have a lot of scope creep and doesn't just slip in because we want it. Okay, uh, I'm told by the area director that uh, our charter is on the next telechat and uh, he's, oh, I'll let Adam speak for himself. So, Anna Roach, it's not technically on the telechat yet. Um, I'm going to look at it very closely, make certain, that I might socialize with a couple people first, but I hope to put it on the next telechat, which is uh, August 2nd. Okay, thank you. Apologize for that confusion. Um, but uh, that should, uh, you know, the expectation is that if all of that proceeds uh, without uh, incident, then we'll be uh, well prepared to uh, pick up some of the new work items that we have uh, pending in our queue. Okay, uh, document management. Um, this is just another opportunity for uh, Antoine and I just to reach out and, and appeal to people, um, you know, please to uh, help us out with respect to document shepherding. Uh, we actually have a couple of documents that are pending a document shepherd um, right now. Um, and I, I know that uh, it, it, is, it is a process. It, there's really just a form that you fill out. And then you have to manage all the comments that uh, the ISG produces as they react to the document. Once it's submitted in, we look for the document shepherd to manage that. And the important thing is the document shepherd cannot be um, a current document author or editor. Um, so you, you need a, uh, someone that's independent from all of that. Um, and I don't know, Antoine, if you wanted to add anything to that, I'll, if you uh, jump in the queue there, I'll let you. Otherwise, I'll just move on here. Um, okay. So we'll uh, move on then to existing document status. We have lots of document status this time. I think that this three-month period has probably been one of our most productive here. A lot of things seem to have come to conclusion and moved on. So that's been a good thing. So we're going to go through four categories of things here. Uh, in terms of items in ISG last call, the top two are actually in ISG last call. Uh, they're, they're in the ISG uh, queue, um, and they're just waiting to uh, uh, come out. And Adam wants to step up. Please, go ahead. Adam Roach. So just as a... Um the RDAP object tag, and this probably happened after you made the slide, that is now on the upcoming telechat as well. So we'll be balloting on that uh, August 2nd as well. Okay, good. Thank you. So these documents will move along. Most important here is that they're kind of out of our queue. Uh, that's what got them onto the slide labeled IETF last call. They're, they are off of our list, which means the milestones list has already been updated too, so they don't have them. The last two, the organizational mapping, and the and the uh, uh, the EPP uh, extension for the organization, they're down here in italics. I put them on this slide because they've been submitted to the ISG, but they they haven't moved further than having been handed to the uh, area director uh, for the next step in the process. Uh, but they, having done that, they get to get off of our milestone list, and so they've been adjusted in that way. Okay. I'm going to move along through these, except for a couple that I know we need to talk about, unless someone wants to jump up at the mic. And we can go back if I move past something that you wanted. Documents that are past working group last call, but have not actually been submitted up. So the first one up here is the bundling registration. It's, it's targeted for being submitted for an informational document. It's the one which is pending a document shepherd. So we really are very interested in someone who's willing to step up and help us along here. Um, and, and be the document shepherd for this and just move this document along. If anyone is interested in doing that, certainly appreciate your, uh, you know, raising your hand or saying so on the mailing list or please come up and see me at the end of this meeting. The change poll document uh, is just waiting for its document shepherd write-up. Um, and the last one is the registry fee extension. Um, and I think we'll, it is past uh, working group last call but a technical issue came up uh, when the document shepherd was doing their write-up. And uh, which one of you is going to stand up? You're going to do that, James? Okay. 
whichever you would like. Um, I, I think if you're here, you can be more. So James Gould is going to talk a little bit about that and, and the meeting and discussion we had earlier today, as well as on the mailing list in the recent past, uh, trying to resolve where to go with this document. The, yeah, go to the other one, I guess. Hello? Huh? Okay. Good. Much better. Yeah, yeah. So a group of us uh, met uh, earlier today, and uh, it, there was a group from VeriSign, from Affiliates, from GoDaddy, and there was also Patrick uh, on the uh, remotely logged in. So what we did was we discussed the particular topic of the <coughs> standard attribute. Um, and in doing the review of the mailing list, um, I identified the specific uh, comments on the list. And uh, when I was going through the review, it, it looked like there was not a consensus at the time. Um, so that's why I brought it up. Uh, we discussed it, and the net result of this was the fact that uh, we felt like it was in line with the data model uh, of, of the system and in, in line with the protocol itself. Um, and that adding this attribute really didn't fundamentally change the behavior at all. Um, so the recommendation at this point was to move the standard attribute from the command, which was incorrect, to the response. As, as I was doing the review, um, it was identified it was actually in the wrong place. So we need to fix that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a message to the list uh, with the notes from the meeting, uh, and then Roger will follow up with an update to the draft. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. And what will happen there is we'll end up with version 12, I think, of that draft at that time. And we will essentially immediately, well, as soon as the, the write-up is finished, then we'll just immediately uh, submit that to the ISG to move that along. Um, this has been one of our most uh, uh, dramatic documents. We've spent uh, probably far more technical time on this document than, than many others. So I, I think it's uh, quite a milestone in our uh, work products here to move this document along. Please. This is Scott Hollenbeck. Jim, if I may, I would caution, though, that we, we shouldn't assume that we should be able to move this document to the IESG once it's updated. Um, given that this decision is just going to be described to the mailing list, it is possible that someone on the list may object, um, may suggest an alternative. And so I think we do need a little bit of time to ensure that we, we have consensus on the approach and you know that it doesn't warrant you know, either continue discussion or another working group last call or something, right? So thank you for that. I'll let Wendy go before I come in. Uh, yes, thank you. And Tuan from the uh, Jabber room saying, yes, we need another working group last call. Um, yeah, I see that's my co-chair saying that. <laughs> my co-chair and I may need to uh, sync up a little bit here. Uh, you know, fair point, um, Scott, uh, and, and I didn't mean to, uh, to, to extend beyond that. Um, Im implicit, and let me just make it explicit so everyone's clear, we're not trying to uh, overtake the, uh, the discussion, but um, the consent, the, what we decided in our discussions today is we were trying to figure out whether this was a technical error in the specification, um, you know, an, an oversight at some point in time that we missed. Um, and in any case, you know, uh, as always with in the ITF, you know, all final decisions are made on the mailing list. So there, there's always that possibility. And in particular, uh, Pat Maroney, although we did our best to represent and talk about his position in all of this, you know, in fairness, he was not part of the discussion this morning when we were trying to figure out what to do. Um, we, we do think that we, we have a, a, a decision and a choice which which meets everyone's needs and also honors and and respects the protocol as as it should be. So we're not making a technical change. We had an oversight in not having completed uh, a change to the schema when we had a discussion, you know, uh, seven months ago, um, and it got into the document. And it wasn't until the document Shepard was doing their uh, particularly thorough review in this case that they identified what was going on. Um, but as in, in fairness, you're right. We will post all of this on the mailing list and make it clear what happened. Um, this, of course, will be documented in a, in a proper way by the document shepherd when we uh, go to submit the document up. And we'll allow some time for discussion on the mailing list, just in case somebody wants to bring something up that we might have missed. Um, but uh, uh, ideally, there, you know, we're hoping that there won't be any issue there. 
we've tried to cover all of the issues that we knew about and all the questions that we had. So, but thank you for that. Okay, uh, moving along quickly again here. So there are other documents that are listed uh, on our, ver on our, we have other documents listed in our working group list of documents. And there are two other documents which are still on our milestones list um, that I wanna call out that we need to make reference to here. Okay, so the ones in italics here on this slide, the second and the fourth one, are actually not on the milestone list. They are documents that are still in the working group that we have not progressed and have not moved forward. Now, case of the TMCH functional specification, that has a, a technical issue on, on the ICANN side that we're waiting to be resolved. So that document is officially parked for right now. Um, and you know, we're, we're hoping that we're gonna get some resolution on the other side so that we can incorporate that into this document and then, um, uh, and then move that one along. The verification code extension, we've just kind of ignored for a while. Uh, we haven't tried to progress that or move it forward. So, uh, and we have not actually even proposed a time frame for when we want to pick that up. So that's a decision that we'll have to come to as we look at other work items to take on. We need a, a decision on what to do with this one. Now, the other two documents, third-party DNS operator and the validate mapping, um, we have actually had some discussion about those. Um, but uh, we, we have not chosen to, to pick those to move along. I know the editors of the DNS operator document really do want to move that document along. Um, they have some issues to address and uh, they need to revive that document and, and revise it and then uh, put it back up on our priority list so that we can close on that document. Um, the, the validate document, um, uh, and I'm thinking I'm drawing a blank here. I'm actually forgetting now after having put all this together Yes, Roger, thank you. Help me out there. Uh, so, um, actually, this is Roger Kearney. Um, we met, uh, I'm going to say a month ago, I can't remember exactly, uh, had an interim meeting, and uh, we were going to cover the validate and the register mapping, but we got stuck on the validate, so it was actually a very productive meeting. We do have quite a few changes coming out of that, uh, and there's been some, uh, I'll say, uh, very few um, suggestions on lists so far since the meeting. Um, but we do have a handful, I would say probably six fairly good uh, modifications to it that are coming in the next few weeks, so. Okay, good, so work is progressing there, so that's a good thing. Okay, all right, moving on, new work items. We have, we, we've had multiple presentations over, uh, you know, the couple of years that we've been in existence about potential work items. These are three that stand out right now um, as being recently proposed and they seem to have more energy. So this is not necessarily intended to be an exhaustive list of things that might come to us, but I wanted to highlight them and make them visible um, for new work items. And uh, I guess, uh, James, you actually had a couple of slides here for the uh, login one. And um, let me... And there we go. Okay, great, great. Um, so yeah, I posted this uh, extension recently and there's been some dialogue on the list. So let me go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah, so the problems that this particular extension addresses is first off, extending the maximum password length past 16 characters, which is in the RFC today. The second problem is the fact that there's no capability in EPP today to return back errors and warnings, security errors and warnings to the client Examples include password expiry, certificate expiry, insecure ciphers, or TLS protocols. Uh, the other one is providing user agent information from the client. In essence, that way the server can help identify potential uh, security issues or functional issues uh, to inform the client in the, uh, in the response. So with that, the extension was posted, um, and the intent is to fix those particular problems. Go to the next slide, please. So I cover each of the problems. So the first one is to extend the password past uh, 16 characters. The way this works is that it extends the login command. Um, since the ROC requires a password of six to 16 characters, a constant value is used there. In essence, in brackets, login dash security. 
uh, that informs the server to look into the extension. Um, and in essence, the client can continue to use passwords uh, as they do today. So it's forward, or I guess it's backward compatible. And then the login extension will allow for passwords beyond 16 characters. Um, so what happens is that the new elements in the extension will support a minimum length of six, which matches what's in the RFC, and it has an undefined maximum so that we could have it move forward as security standards change. The next slide. And here's an example, uh, very straightforward. So in essence, um, you can see here that uh, the constants are in the, the base, and then that's telling the server to look in the extension, and there's a longer password. It's very straightforward. Right, the next one is a little bit more complex, um, but uh, very useful. In essence, the, the server will be able to return back um, security events, and it could be a list of them, uh, to the client. And the only time this extension is included is first off the unhandled namespace issue. If the client includes it, that uh, extension in the login services, and there's at least one event. Um, so go to the next slide. So these are the attributes of the security events. You have a type, and there's a set of predefined, whether it's password, certificate, cipher. Um, there's also a statistical um, item as well, like for example, a certain number of failed logins within a certain duration, um, and then custom for extensibility. Um, and there's a warning and error level. And in essence, an error should result in a failed login. Um, you can have an expiration date for things like password expiry, certificate expiry, and there are some additional attributes here for statistics, which would be a value and duration. And there's a free form description. Go to the next one and we'll see an example. There's an example of a, a password that is going to expire. So in essence, it's a warning. Um, the, the authentication in fact worked, uh, but this provides the client with information that they need to change the password. Uh, next. Here's an example of a, a scenario where the password has expired. So therefore it's an authentication error. And the reason why it's an error is because the password is in fact expired. Keep going. Okay, and then we have the user agent information. I gotta tell you, it's, it's very difficult on the server to identify what clients will be impacted by certain things. So without having the user agent information, we can't, we can't make those calls. So this extension will allow for the client to include the user agent information in the login command itself. <coughs> so move to the next slide. Here's an example of it. So in essence, in the extension, it just has the user agent information, which includes it's an SDK using Java on the Mac. And that's pretty much it. So uh, we did have some feedback on the list. Um, some of those folks really wanted to broaden this to consider other authentication methods. Um, right now, it's, it's very limited, so I'd be looking for any suggestions about how to specifically do that, if that is the case. There's comments around the use of the constant value. Um, we also had dialogue related to setting of the minimum password length, and we agreed to use the RFC length of six as the minimum. And there was also discussions related to the XML schema type to use for the password, and we pretty much just reused what was in the RFC. Uh, next slide, please. So in conclusion, uh, this extension solves the three problems by extending the login command to address the password length, uh, address the user agents, um, and in the response, we will provide back the uh, security warnings and errors. So I highly suggest that you go ahead and review it um, and uh, provide any feedback. All feedback is welcome. Wait a minute. And we uh, have someone in MedEcho, so let me, um, Alexander. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah. um, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Alexander, we're not really hearing you. Um, OK. OK, put it in the chat. OK, that's much better. Um, uh, while he's doing that, uh, please go ahead. 
Me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stefan Bartmeier, Afnik. Uh, actually, for the problem of additional authentication method, the suggestion on the mailing list was to not to reinvent the wheel by ourselves, but to reuse a, a well-known framework, SASL. I cannot say that I like SASL or even that I understand it, but I'm certain that when it comes to security, it's almost always a bad idea to redo it yourself. So it's probably better to simply refer to something which is well known and established in the AETF. Okay, I see James taking notes. That was good. And uh, oh, there it is. Let me read out what uh, he wrote in the chat room here. I like this draft and was only wondering whether those features can be used independently. So can I use the security warning mechanism with the standard passwords? Uh, yeah, they can. Um, in essence, um, you know, the user of the user agent information is they're all completely separate. Yeah, I mean, you can you can choose to do them separately, but I would highly recommend that at least support the password length uh, change. Perfect. Okay, and we heard perfect from Alexander, so that's perfect. Okay. Um, all right. Good. Thank you, James. And going on, I think that's it for those. So um, before we move into the other thing, I want to talk a little bit about uh, next steps. I just realized I didn't, we didn't put a slot on here for talking about what's, what's happening next. Um, what we have been focused on uh, quite dramatically uh, this year in particular over the last 12 months since last summer and uh, been especially successful in, in closing the loop here on a number of things is to clear our milestone list and, and the number of documents that we have on our docket. Um, we've been kind of moving things along kind of slowly, um, and it's been really helpful to, uh, to suddenly come to closure on a number of things um, and, and really close that loop recently. So with the uh, charter update, it opens the uh, opportunity for us to take on some additional documents. Um, we do have some other uh, work items. We have already been talking about registry mapping, for example, um, and it's you know not currently on our on our list. Um, we now have the uh, login document, um, and uh, you know we're going to have and we have some new work items here. Uh, I just feel like we didn't. There's a work item here we didn't we didn't talk about. Did I? Yeah, I skipped over the escrow stuff, didn't I? <laughs> I went right past that. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and, and we have the escrow stuff. We'll give Gustavo a chance to come back and, and remind us of that and, and speak to that stuff too. So we have a number of pending things that have been out there. And we will try to move these along in the mailing list. The critical thing at the moment is to continue to uh, uh, complete the couple of documents that are you know very close and all but published. We have a, a number that are right there, and we're, we're just going to about done with that. Um, we also need our charter update, so we need to get past that with the uh, ISG and our ARA director, and hopefully that'll be successful. So I suspect that uh, leading in to the next IETF meeting, we will have opportunities on the mailing list, and we'll be reaching out to talk about working group adoption on some new work items, and we'll need to prioritize them and then update our milestone list accordingly. Okay, so we've been doing a, a good job here. Uh, lately of getting things off our milestone list. It is now down to just having the couple of things open that uh, we've already reviewed and, and I mentioned. Everything else has been uh, shuttled off and had its state changed so that we know where it is. Um, and, and that's been a good thing. So I guess I just wanted to call that out for people. Watch for uh, some notes on the list about the charter update, um, the last couple of documents to, to move on, and then we'll start uh, bringing some new documents in formally uh, into the working group and, and move them along. So uh, just we'll, and I'll let Gustavo come up now. And uh, if folks want to comment on that or say anything about that, let me give Gustavo a chance first to talk about the uh, data escrow uh, documents and see what he wants to say there. And then we'll uh, take questions and comments about anything from anyone. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Gustavo Lozano I can. So those, uh, well, of those three documents, in reality, the first one was the first version and then it was split into the other two so we can forget about the first one but the other two are the documents that i would like in the work group to, to adopt at some point in time so in the gtld space we have this process called data escrow so basically all gtld these are required to create this 
deposit with some data elements from the uh, SRS database, and they put this information into a data score agent. And then the agent can release the deposit if certain conditions uh, arise. So those documents are heavily used in the GTLD space. They are used by GTLDs, data escrow agents, Ibero providers. Uh, they have been used several times for doing transitions, uh, and they are used on a daily basis. Um, the documents are pretty stable now. Uh, they are not expired, so they are current. And I, they have already an implementation section, so you can go and see uh, which entities have implemented these um, documents. So that's it. I mean, those those are the, the two documents that I would like in the future this group uh, work with to adopt. I'll add, um, speaking for myself, um, not as chair, that uh, just emphasize something that uh, Gustavo had said. These documents are pretty stable. Uh, you know, most GTLD registries are already doing this and they're using them. So uh, I would hope that uh, these documents probably represent a couple of work items we can uh, progress rather quickly uh, unless there's a, an issue which uh, pops up. And now Roger's going to tell me about something I missed, right? No, this is Roger. No, I, I, I actually haven't read these, so I'll, I'll go back and read them. But are they stable in the sense of all the changes in data privacy recently? Yeah, they were updated recently to accommodate uh, all the very, uh, data privacy things. Okay. Uh, yes, please, Scott, go ahead. Uh, Scott Holland back. Um, Gustavo, do you know, are these practices being used outside of the GTLD space at all in the CCTLD community? And here's where I'm coming with that, right? In the past, when we've looked at either protocols or practices that are unique to a particular community, a particular company, a particular vendor, the, uh, the practice has typically been to publish them as informational, right? They don't necessarily represent a, an industry standard. Um, if these practices were being used in the CCTLD community as well, I'd feel much more comfortable with saying, yeah, I mean, I see these as a, as, as a broad industry practice, a broad in a potential standard for the industry. But if not, it might be worth describing them as something like, you know, the ICANN recommendation for data escrow or something like that. I mean, we, we can have this debate when we start talking about adopting the documents and what the intended status is, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if you do know of implementation outside the ICANN community, I think that'd be some very interesting information to share. Thank you, Scott. That's a very good question. So I'm hopeful that Gustavo can uh, see if he can get some of that information and have that available when it comes time to talk about it. And uh, oh, I'll stay back here. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, yeah, Rick Wilhelm, Ver Rick Wilhelm Verisign. Um, the, as Roger's point about the privacy things, uh, things for those that don't wallow in ICANN and its processes very often, things related to uh, ICANN's ad ad efforts to adopt the temporary specification and turn into a more formal policy are are still very much in flux and it it is entirely possible that the uh, escrow provisions might be changed by you know because it's all still unlitigated to every, the application of the gdpr which just went into effect on may 25th has all not really been tested in court it's only getting its first test right now in german court so it, it's it's the point is that they have been stable i think they've been technically stable for a while but we might see some change due to things that are outside of our technical control. Yes, a lot of moving parts in the privacy space. <laughs> um, we'll just have to track that as best we can. Okay, uh, next up on the agenda is uh, work session summaries, as I had uh, indicated before. Um, you know, we did have a, uh, a working session uh, yesterday, two hours. We had three topics that came up. And uh, we'll uh, now take a few minutes and give everybody a chance uh, who are the leaders of, of those topic sessions to uh, give a, a short summary and, and open for any questions that you uh, might want to ask. So hang out for a moment afterwards and see what kind of questions we get. So Roger Carney, you're up first. Uh, this is Roger. Um, yeah, so we met um, yesterday. Uh, we went over uh, the overview for those that are new to it, uh, those that ignored it, those that purposely forgot it. 
Um, we still went over the overview. We went through all the discussion points that came out of um, the last meeting, uh, as well as all the discussion points on the list. Uh, we talked through all those things, and I know that we have several items that we'll be updating um, and several, up several items that we still need to uh, discuss on list prior to updating. Uh, but the uh, it was it was a good discussion yesterday. We uh, will be uh, trying to meet fairly regularly for the next few months to to progress this along as as quickly as we can. Uh, we'll let the list know uh, as soon as we know anything about future meetings. But yeah, we do plan on meeting and getting an update to this rather soon. So. Um. Let me make a comment and then ask a question of you before you go away. And, and anyone else who has a question, please do stand up. Just to uh, put a little bit of context here, um, this is a, a work item that that's been kind of an, an ad hoc, you know, volunteer work item. It's not formally a part of the working group, although we had always intended to to take it on. Um, and it is kind of a substantial piece of work. And so uh, Roger's been kind of going forward with that, and and we've used the mailing list for some discussion about it. And, and all of that's okay. You know, the purpose of this mailing list is for any topics related to registries and internet identifier systems. So uh, I don't think it's out of scope, at least for discussions. Um, but did want to draw a line on that. Could could you say a few words about the the context of registry mapping? What problem are, is it solving, and and why it's uh, why we're doing it? Sure. Uh, a brief brief overview. Yes. Uh, it's, it's and actually, I ask for that because this room is, is larger than is typical for yep. us, and we have at least twice as many people as usual here. So uh, just for the benefit of those in the room who might not have heard this before and been tracking too carefully. You bet. And, and I'm from GoDay, so a registrar that uh, uh, has onboarded a few TLDs. And if you're on the other side, if you're a registry, you know um, how painful it is. We send out a 30 to 40 page questionnaire for every TLD we onboard. It has 300 plus questions on it. Uh, it's, it's to answer all the questions in the numerous RFCs that say may or shall or optional, all those things that a registry gets a choice on. Uh, as a registrar, we need to know what those choices were. So. Um, and that's where the 300 questions come from. We need to know what every one of those things are. One of the big difficulties out of it and why we kind of wanted to bring it to EPP or some other mechanism is consistent um, naming. Uh, every registry calls a uh, certain parameter a different name. So even with the 300 specific questions we ask, we get back question or responses like yes, to something that we were expecting text back on. Um, so it's one of those things where it typically can take six weeks for us to bring on somebody to answer all these questions. And it's not six weeks of work, but it's six weeks of process time uh, that we had to wait through. The goal here is hopefully we can get 80% of those things done um, in five minutes, you know, just a response to this and we're done with 80% of those questions and then we can work on the remaining 20% um, that we need to. So that's the pain that we have and what we're hoping to solve. Thank you. And I'm not seeing anyone jumping up for the microphone. So I guess that's it for that. Thanks. Uh, I expect this, that particular work item to be one of the early ones that we seek to adopt once we have the opportunity to uh, take on some new work. Um, okay. Unhandled namespaces, Jim Gould. Yeah, so uh, just to clarify the, the particular topic here, um, the issue is um, in the registries, there's a message queue for the, the clients. Um, and these are well-structured messages. Um, and the fact of the matter is that when the clients connect, they specify what services they support. There may be uh, an instance where the message has a uh, extension that the client does not support. So the question was, what should the server do? Um, and then there was a question around what is the intent within the RFCs themselves. So um, we described the problem. We talked about three different options to address it, which in essence is um, we do nothing. The RFC uh, allows for the server to return things that the client does not support, um, or there is a problem and it's not big enough to do anything about, or it is 
a problem and that we should do something about it and come up with a common solution. So um, what we did was we had, a, we had a lot of discussion related to um, um, alternatives to actually coming up with a solution. There was an example of returning a, a, an error uh, with message queue information. There was a discussion on uh, creating a filtered queue, which it only has messages that the client uh, supports. Um, providing a priority queue, which will, um, in essence, only ret return the uh, messages that they support first, and then after that, it will return an error. Uh, another one that uh, we said was to be able to reformat the poll message, so therefore it is protocol compliant, um, but will still provide the information to the client for later processing. Uh, so the result of this was that uh, it was clear that um, there is a problem from a protocol perspective. Many agree that the protocol should not, or the server should not return back extensions that the client does not support. Um, the question was coming down to whether or not this is a policy decision or a technical one. Um, and uh, with that, with those three options, it looked like uh, there was more support for uh, this being a problem, but there's not a need for a solution uh, for it. Um, but with that, I believe the next step is um, for me and uh, Martin to create an internet draft, at least define what the solution that we proposed. Um, it would be up to the working group whether or not to take this on. Uh, but I believe it is a problem. I believe it needs to be fixed. And um, we will go ahead and create an internet draft to uh, define that. So that's it. Thank you. We had quite a vigorous discussion about this issue um, yesterday and last night, continuing into the evening. Go yeah. ahead, Roger. This, Roger. Um, and, and I agree with Jim. I think that there is the identification of a potential problem there on the server side. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how big of a problem it is. And I, I think it's a good idea if, if Jim wants to take it on that he documents what the problem is and what possible solutions there are. Again, I'm not sure, sure that it's a priority thing. Uh, definitely wouldn't bump up on my list of work items to look at. So um, just my two cents. So I agree. And speaking for myself, I guess my real challenge in the discussion about it all was whether or not this represents a problem or not. Um, it's certainly a question. And we can examine whether or not things are, are set up in a way that the right thing is happening or not. Uh, but uh, that was my pushback at the time. But we'll we'll save that for a future discussion about it all as we as we settle on it. So, okay, I'm not seeing anyone else jumping up to the microphone. So I guess there's no other questions from folks. That's fine. Uh, so Francisco, uh, want to tell us he uh, uh, talked yesterday a bit about uh, RDAP search capabilities and authentication. And uh, please go ahead. Um, do you have my, my slide? No. Oh, you want me to put that up? If not, I, I can just look at here. I have my... uh, it's fine. I... Only takes a moment. That's, that's the beauty of this thing here. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. This is Francis Cordes from ICANN. Um, oh, I sent a, the, a one, one with the, the summary. Anyway, it's fine. Oh, you I... sent a summary with slide. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Fine. No. Uh, it's okay. That'll take an extra minute, but you'll probably sure. be done by then. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, a few things came up uh, yesterday on, on this session. Well, I guess I first should um, explain quickly what this is about um, for those that were not there uh, yesterday. So um, RDAP has uh, some limited search capabilities defined in RFC 7, uh, 7482. Uh, one of the co-authors of the uh, RFC yesterday described it as um, I think, uh, um, uh, short of a real uh, specification that was defined uh, last minute that uh, needs uh, uh, ser uh, imp serious improvement. Uh, but um, the motivation for this, uh, to doing this now, is because uh, as part of the ICANN uh, fort on the GDPR compliance, uh, there is um, a temporary specification that was defined to deal with this. And one of the things that is um, defining the term spec, uh, uh, although some people contend that, is that um, there is a requirement to offer RDAP searchability uh, and there are specific requirements on that regard. 
So uh, one of the suggestions from yesterday was to move uh, the searches to use regular expressions, as has been proposed by uh, Scott and others. There is a, already a draft on, on this regard. Uh, there, is al there was also uh, the point raised that we need to do a serious uh, review for internationalization to make sure that uh, the searches work correctly, since we will be uh, dealing with um, data that is um, not just ASCII, since we will be talking about uh, fields like a uh, contact name, for example. Um, what else? There were some concerns about the, the resources that will be used on the server side uh, and, and the mechanics to deliver potentially large result sets on this regard. Uh, Mario uh, Lofredo uh, pointed out that there is um, or um, uh, there is already a, a draft or a couple of drafts from, from him that uh, deal with this topic. Uh, so there is potentially a solution there for, for this. Um, there was also a suggestion that maybe there is a, a better mechanism to solve this problem, uh, the underlying problem that is trying to be solved. Um, although um, uh, I don't recall a specific suggestion on how to go about this one. Uh, it was also pointed out that this is an evolving topic, just as Rick mentioned before, uh, regarding privacy, uh, at least on the ICANN side, on the GTLE side, uh, this is uh, something that is still a, a sort of a, a moving target. Um, um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Comments or questions from anyone? I guess just speaking for myself, I, I saw this as, uh, you know, th this is a, a space that needs some, uh, some, some better structure and, and better specification. Um, you know, in the, in the last round of GTLDs in, in the ICANN world, there was, uh, uh, you know, some comments about how to support search and what you needed and how it applied to everything. But I think we have an opportunity here to really step back and look at this from a, a technical point of view and really think about what is the right thing to do and and the right way to to provide that um, so that uh, the policy considerations have something to build on um, something more a, a good foundation in which to build so um, I look forward to having the opportunity to have a discussion about uh, the searching issues and, and what that really means in general to RDAP services and RDAP based services and no comments from anyone else Okay. Um, oh, wrong set of slides. Got to go back over here. Okay, that was the end of the working group ceremony session, and um, that brings us down to any other business. Yay! Um, <laughs> we've actually uh, given people back. We're we're just about at uh, twenty after the hour, so um, you know that uh, gets us to uh, a little bit of an early place, which is uh, nice. A few minutes early. Um, anybody have any comments about anything at all? Anything we've talked about, haven't talked about? Something you want to talk about? Open door. And if not, you know, I, I think, uh, again, I want to want to thank people for, for keeping up. We've had quite a productive year this year um, in, in finally closing the loop on a number of documents. So, you know, thanks again for that. And let's see if we can keep our energy going as we uh, move into to, to new work items. So thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll see you on the mailing list. That's it. I guess we're adjourned is the official phrase that should be stated at least once. Thanks to uh, Wendy and Rick um, for uh, Jabber and for minutes. So for the team signage draft, there was this question uh, of the Yeah, yeah. There's, there's this issue of uh, how comparisons of people have to go back and uh, check the details again. But that's what I'm going to do. Yeah.
Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. I have to actually get up. So we got 10 minutes. Right. So we ended. That's fine. I'm sorry. So I'm going to pack up all the time. Yes. If it was, then yeah, please. If I if I have missed tracking something, uh, then please. Ah, thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Appreciate the uh, no problem. Appreciate the help. Assistance. Um, I guess what I would would suggest is yeah, you start by uh, talking to Patrick, uh, making sure that it is resolved.